Hello Eagles fans, I'm Chris McPherson and welcome to PhiladelphiaEagles.com. Here at the Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, I had a chance to catch up with offensive coordinator Marty Morningweg for a State of the Eagles offense going into the 2012 offseason. We talked about the development of Michael Vick, running back LaShawn McCoy's outstanding 2011 season, the future of Deshaun Jackson in Philadelphia, and the progress of the offensive line, all that and more in this one-on-one -on -one interview. Coach, first thing I want to ask you is you've had a few months now to do a little bit of self-scouting, see what happened during the course of this season. When you look at the turnovers that this team had, what do you think that you guys can do going to next season to reduce them? Well, you just said to take care of the football. We have been uh, going through the whole process with our scheme evaluation as well as the evaluations on NFL free agents. And then we're here in Indianapolis and uh, certainly have got a bunch of evaluations on the players that are coming out of college. But but uh, yeah, take care of the football in, in many different ways. They, they, they occurred in many different ways this year, so we've got to get better doing that. How important will it be for Michael Vick to have a full off season as a starting quarterback, something that he's not had yet yeah. with the Eagles? Well, that's right. We're excited. He's excited. He's been in the, in the building uh, virtually every day uh, during the off season. So he's excited. It's important not only for Michael, but it's important for all of our players uh, and, and especially uh, some of those younger players that have been with us for just one or two years to get this off season. So uh, we're we're all excited about this off season. Uh, we, we can get better at many many things. What did you see from Michael in the last four games of the season, where he seemed to play more from the pocket, seemed more confident from there, wasn't rushing as much? What did you see on tape in, in those last four games when he came back from the injury? Well, really, if you remember, he he, he was pretty hot well, early. He was on track to. Boy, throw for 4,000 and rush for 1,000. So that, that's unique uh, there. Um, uh, and, then, and then the last four games, uh, you, you could see, uh, and really early in the season, let me go back, early in the season, uh, he, got, he got better at many, many things. Uh, but it just didn't, it didn't uh, you couldn't see it because of the, the score of the game. Uh, and then it certainly it paid off uh, uh, those last four games, and you saw our whole football team played very well, and, 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 and Mike, uh, Mike managed the game beautifully. We saw Mike Kafka get some of his first NFL snaps last season. For those that don't get to see practice every day, what is it that gives you guys confidence that down the road that he can be a good starting quarterback, if need be, or a very good backup? Well, he's got some qualities uh, uh, that are important. Uh, decision-making, accuracy, timing. Uh, so, uh, and his decision-making process has been pretty well, pretty good uh, throughout um, uh, most of the opportunities that he's had. So, uh, and uh, he's a diligent worker and he's got a high level of skill and ability. So I think the future is bright for Mike Kafka. The Eagles signed Trent Edwards or agreed to terms on a one-year contract. A guy that has some experience in the West Coast offense, has some starting experience. Yeah. When you scouted him, when you evaluate him, what do you think makes him a good fit for this offense? Well, he can really throw the football. Uh, you, you know, you remember him coming out of Stanford uh, many years ago, uh, uh, got beat up pretty good there in college and, and did a nice job uh, uh, with uh, Buffalo when he had the opportunity. Uh, he, again, can really throw the football, uh, good decision maker, more of a pocket guy, um, and, uh, really smart. So we're excited to have him. LaShawn McCoy, breakout 2011 season, one of the most elite third down running backs in the entire football league, three down running backs, I should say. What was it that allowed him to take that next step last season? Well, he's always been very good, um, and it's a cumulative effect of reps, reps, reps for him uh, because he's a talented young man. And uh, when I say young, he still is really young. Uh, so. Uh, he had a unique season uh, running the football. Uh, the offensive line and tight ends and, and even the receivers did a heck of a job. But the most important guy is the guy with his ball in the hands when, when you talk about rushing, the rushing game. Uh, so uh, he had a great year, uh, uh, did a terrific job in other aspects as well. Uh, you know, he catches the football in the backfield very well. He also blocks very well when, when, when he's forced to. Uh, uh, a la pass protection. Uh, he, he had one bad game in the pass protection, uh, but other than that, he did a nice job. It seemed like as the season went on, 
you tailor the offense and the play calling more and more to fit his strengths and to make him more of the focal point of the offense. What was it that gave you the confidence to be able to do that and continue to have success with that? Well, he was the focal point of the offense pretty much all year. You know, you've got, you know, I like to use all the eligible receivers and runners. However, you've got LaShawn back in the backfield and you've got Deshaun and Jeremy and, and Jason, you know, out wide. And then, of course, you have Michael. So, and then, and then uh, Brent Selleck um, and Clay Harbor uh, had big years as well, you know. So, um, but from the backfield, uh, uh, LaShawn was a focal point uh, most of the year. And, uh, you remember early he was scoring a touchdown a game or more. Uh, so he had a pretty good run the whole year. A lot of fans always ask about how good did the offensive line really play. Now this is a new coach, new scheme, a lot of new starters along the offensive line. It didn't even come together until right before the start of the season. Right. How, in your estimation, and looking back at the tape throughout the course of the season, did the offensive line perform last season? Oh, I'm, I, I think, I really know this, that our offensive line has an opportunity to be one of the best offensive lines in this league. Uh, and you're right. We had a lot of new players, uh, a new coach. Uh, we were doing some new things. Um, so I, I was really impressed with the way that they came together. And, um, you know, we've got, we've got a free agent there as well. That we, and, and then we've got some depth as well. We've got some good players uh, that haven't played yet. So um, I'm excited about the future of our offensive line. And, uh, you know, everything starts with the offensive line, as you know. That enables LaShawn McCoy and Michael Vick and all the receivers and tight ends uh, to be able to do their job. They've got to get their job done first. Can you speak more specifically to the two rookies? Jason Kelsey started all 16 games. Danny Watkins was in there about five games into the season, and he started the rest of the way. How did they progress throughout the course of the season? Outstanding. Both are going to be outstanding players. I think they already are. Uh, unique situation where it, it's hard, and I'm talking about Kelsey, it's hard to make uh, a change at center as is. You make a change and then do a rookie center starting his first ball game, uh, that's unique. Um, a great respect for Jason Kelsey and what he did this year um, and has sort of become a leader of the offensive line. Very smart, very physical, very athletic, as you've seen. Uh, so, um, and then Danny did a tremendous job down the stretch. He wasn't quite as ready coming in for the program. And so it took him several weeks into the season to get himself ready. And when he got ready, uh, he played well down the stretch. Both can get better uh, with an offseason. There's, there's two more players where the offseason becomes real important. Jeremy Alger, Howie Roseman spoke at the Combine and told reporters that when it comes to Deshaun Jackson, he thinks he has a bright future as a Philadelphia Eagle, and that he's an optimistic guy and hopes things can work out with him. How important is Deshaun to this offense, and what would it mean if he's back here in 2012? Well, Deshaun Jackson knows what I think about him, uh, so uh, we'll keep that personal. Uh, however, he, he scares people is what he does uh, when he's on the field because he's always a threat uh, for the big play. Uh, so uh, he'd be important to anybody's offense, uh, that, that speed alone. And then uh, Deshaun's a natural player, so we're excited about the future. Uh, going forward with Deshaun Jackson as a Philadelphia Eagle. Uh, he's an outstanding player and, and will be in the future as well. One receiver whose role expanded throughout the course of the year was Brent Selleck. Talk about how he was able to progress and how Michael became more and more comfortable with him as a go-to target in the offense. Yeah, well, uh, uh, some of it was a little bit of fortune. Uh, some of it was uh, trying to get uh, Brent Selleck the ball. Uh, some of it was well, Michael Vick becoming uh, comfortable with Brent. So all of those things sort of came together uh, somewhere, if I remember correctly, in the middle of the year, you know, that uh, uh, first third of the year. And Brent, Brent uh, had a, a highly productive year in the passing game for us. Now, uh, both Brent and Clay do some things in line that few people get to see that help us tremendously as well. So they're both excellent players for us. And, and uh, Brent's numbers were up just a little bit this year, so that was a good thing for him and us. How important is it that Clay, another guy who didn't have that offseason last year, yeah. comes in and helps make this you know, two tight end offense as effective as it can be? Well, Clay Harbor's going to be a good football player. Uh, already is. 
uh, a physical guy, athletic man, uh, and can run. And so he's got uh, big play capabilities in him. Uh, so this offseason is important for another man, Clay Harbor. Uh, this this offseason is uh, – and so he's going to work diligently. And um, many of our players already have. They're in the building, working on their own, getting their own film. We're getting their – they're working with the strength coaches, of course. So um, – and then, and then all the guys that were getting rehab are working hard as well. So uh, we're just real excited about the offseason. With what the Patriots did with their two tight end sets, do you see that becoming more and more in vogue and where the league shifts to more of attacking the middle of the field and in between the numbers instead of outside the numbers has had been in previous years? Well, you always try to do that. And the two things come to mind with the two tight ends is, that, first of all, many things are cyclic in this league. And secondly, you've got to have two tight ends that are good enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and you go all the way back. When, when I was in Green Bay, we had uh, uh, Jackson and Chimura. And then when I was in San Francisco, you know, we had uh, uh, Jones and a, and a couple other guys who were very good. And then <clears throat> we've had two good tight ends here in Philadelphia on many different occasions. And so, uh, yeah, it'll always be part of our game. One young guy that intrigues me is Deion Lewis guy that got to shine in that last game of the regular season, the guy who can run, catch the ball, show the return capability as well. Is he a guy that you can envision as a dynamic weapon to mix in there with LaShawn McCoy down the road? Yeah, absolutely. He is. And uh, uh, I remember a answering questions earlier in the year about Dion, and uh, uh, certainly could have given him more opportunities. However, LaShawn was so hot uh, that it was hard not to give him the football. And so. Dion's a, a young player that uh, every opportunity he's uh, had, he's taken advantage of and, and played at a high level. So uh, I would expect him to play more and more and more uh, as his career continues with us here in Philadelphia. So, uh, and he certainly is dynamic and he's a heck of a runner. Now, there's a couple things he's got to get better at to, to help us off Philadelphia. Marty, my last question for you is this. A lot of fans want to know what can the Eagles do to get better in the red zone? Brent Selig's very good in the red zone. Jerry Macklin has been very productive in the red zone. But overall, what do you think that the team can do on offense to improve the red zone numbers next season? Well, we were middle of the road in the red zone. You know, we are right in the middle, I think. Um, so it's, uh, it's correlated directly with the turnovers. We had an exorbitant amount of turnovers in the red zone, and, and we, we pride ourselves in not turning the ball over in the red zone. And really, the correlation to winning normally is not uh, with the red zone numbers. It's with how many times you get it in the red zone, because typically you're scoring points, whether it be seven or three in the red zone. Well, this year we turned the ball over so many times, I believe it was eight times in the red zone, that if we just uh, minimize that to a normal amount, we're pretty dynamic in the red zone. So um, uh, we'll, we'll continue to work uh, taking care of the football in all aspects of the game, uh, and especially down in the red zone.